Believe it or not, I love flying. I even love the over 20 hour journey with two layovers that it took me to get here. <laughs> In short, I'll admit that the passengers can be polite and that the food can be, can be pretty bad and the air can get stuck. But it's all worth it to me. A large part of this magic probably comes from the fact that I like the flight attendants working with me. My experience with flying is an occasional wonder instead of a daily work. This countering perspective <coughs> drew me to the sea around the world in a bad mood. In this story, Flight attendant Renee shares the hidden perspective of those working in the air. It turns out that behind the plastered smiles and the customer service voices, flight attendants will do a lot behind the scenes. Enjoy Around the World in a Bad Mood by Renee. A fly attendant, and the world is my oyster. And what my oyster over slow flights, weather delays, air traffic control delays, center seats, crappy food, air rage. It's so glamorous. Kind of like a greyhound bus in the sky. This is just a glimpse into my life. A story about air travel, fly attendants, and me. So, fasten your seatbelts. Raise your tray table and stow your back. The journey is about to begin. Welcome to my nightmare. First class. Welcome aboard, sir. So glad you could join us today. You have seat 4B. Get your gin and tonic. My pleasure. Pleasure my butt. I don't want to make him a gin and tonic. I'd rather watch pain dry. Here you go, sir. Oh, you can find room for your carry-on. You're tired of lifting it and you want someone to get it out of your way. And I guess I'm the lucky one. I cannot believe my good fortune. What has he got in here? A dead body? And this six foot, 200 pound cruiser can't lift it. How does he possibly think I, five foot four and 110 pounds, can lift it? You know, sir, I think this bag is a little big for the overhead. Perhaps I could check it to your final destination? Better guess, perhaps I could check you to your final destination and put the bag in your seat. The bag would probably be a lot more interesting. Unacceptable, you say? I'll tell you what's unacceptable, aside from the size of your bag, your personality. He probably thinks just because he's sitting in first class that he's entitled to be rude to everyone in the world. Well, I'm taking this bag whether Mr. Congeniality likes it or not. Oh, I didn't mean to disturb you. Yes, well, it looks like the only available option is to check it. It sort of exceeds the size requirements. A little bit like your ego, pal. Oh boy, he's getting up now. Well, that got him into action. Probably hasn't moved that fast in years. My, my, look at those muscles. Amazing how we can hit that two time bag into the overhead. Just two minutes ago, he didn't have the strength. Thanks so much for helping with your bag. I'm glad we didn't have to check it. My name? My name? What the hell does he want my name for? It's not like we're going to be buddies. In fact, if things work out the way I am hoping, we will never see each other again. So why on God's green earth does he need to know my name? Oh no, he's probably going to write me up. Why, why me? I'm just, I'm just standing here doing my job, risking my chiropractic good health, trying to help this brute with his back. And what, and what do I get for all my trouble? This idiot requested my name. You know, maybe, maybe I'll just make up a name. Oh no, you don't need to apologize. I'm sure you've had a hard day and having to tell that heavy bag of yours around has got to be tiring. Hard day? I'll give you a hard day. My day. Now that is a hard day. Five stops between Chicago and Los Angeles, airplanes with people just like this guy. And I've got to do the same thing tomorrow and the next day too. 
did I ever know to deserve this? All I want is a simple life to do my job, go home, hide under the covers, and watch television, and watch television to my next up awful trip. Is that expecting too much out of life? I think not. Oh, it's your another gin and tonic? I'll be happy to. I'll be right back. Confessions. I want to let you in on a little secret. Contrary to popular belief, flight attendants are not perfect. Most of us are pretty close to it, but occasionally we stray. I recently interviewed several flight attendants from different international airlines and asked them to, to confess to a wrongdoer. Here is the partial list. I stopped the boys that fit on the floor. I told the passenger that she was looking to make her connection when I knew she wouldn't. Just look at her my back. I've ignored passenger call lots repeatedly. I served decaf coffee to the entire cabin instead of regular coffee who can be with all for a sleep. When we ran out of bottled water, I erased the bottle with tap water and served it. I blocked off the back bathroom on a full on a full 747 so that it would be available for crew only. I went into the first class coat closet, found the adorable man in two geese jacket, and put a love note in his pocket. He later called me. <coughs> I forgot to open both back doors on the 757 and realized it about an hour into the flight. I didn't say anything to anyone else and quietly armed them when no one was around. Father knows best. You might be wondering why I became a flight attendant in the first place. I ask myself that very question every day. Frankly, I had no interest in the airline industry whatsoever. I had other things in mind. So, business. I wanted to be a star, and once I make up my mind about something, it is pretty difficult to sway me. When you're 22, with a heart full of hope, there is very little that can stand in your way. Except, maybe your dad. Renee, the airlines are having open interviews, and acting isn't a real job. You can go over to the airport and pick up an application. An application for what? To be a stewardess. I think they're called flight attendants these days, Dad. I reluctantly took the newspaper as he handed it to me and read the ad. Are you looking for a career that is exciting and glamorous? Do you like to travel and work with the public? We are seeking candidates who are professional, poised, and service-minded for, op for, for immediate openings as flight attendants. Candidates must be willing to relocate to any of our bases. New York, Chicago, San Francisco. After I saw the words New York, things started going in slow motion. That was it. The next thing I knew, I was off to the airport to pick up my application to become a flight attendant. That's exactly my first, my first choice of a dream job. But how bad could it be? Thank you.